us to Acer Team Story Cup. We have Acer against Empire Ents here. Of course, this is a uh, best of nine between these teams. Acer was up four to one. Now they're up four to three. Happy making a great comeback, taking out uh, Scarlet. Then, of course, full innovation being revived, taking out innovation. And then, of course, we just saw um, recently he, he just took out Blot. So now, of course, uh, Acer, who are they going to put in next? It's It looks like it's going to be Nurchio. So age-old nemesis coming back. <laughs> well, like I said, Bly, he plays really vicious. Nurchio plays really methodical. And I know there's people out there who really they say, like, oh, he plays coin flippy. Sometimes he gets lucky. Sometimes it's just coincidence and what have you. But I've had the pleasure of casting Nurchio multiple times for, like, you know, Zotac Cups and such over the past year. And the one thing I can say downright... You might know him for various other things that aren't worth bringing up, but the one true fact is Nurchio's a very good Zerg player because he's a very intelligent Zerg player. And uh, I'm not at all surprised that they would bring him out to take on Happy. Yeah, he really thinks his moves through very well. And, uh, and it's important to note the map is going to be Frost. And one thing about Frost is that uh, if there's one way to annoy Nurchio, it's to sit around and play a really passive mech game because he, he actually hates that. Same thing with Protoss. If you're a Protoss, you want to annoy, uh, annoy Nurchio, you just sit back and just turtle on like cannons and go to Tempest and, and he'll get pretty mad. So the fact that it's Frost makes it very hard to do that. It, the map's spread out. There's it's four spawns. Um, it, it's not a map you can split. And, and so uh, I think that's actually great for Nurchio. Well, let's not forget, too, there's all like a hundred back doors between like the yeah. sides of the map and the third bases and all this. So I don't know. I one thing worth noting, too, like we kind of figured this out during the break. We were expecting MMA to come out at some point and just TVT the heck out of happy. But MMA has got to compete in WCS. Yeah, he's actually not available to Acer in this particular setup. And that's really unfortunate for them. Yeah, he, I mean, he's one of their key players, so. Um, I mean, that means that if if Happy wins, it'll probably be Innovation will come out again, or potentially Scarlet, I think, would be would be the two I, I would see coming out. Or maybe I, I would have to bet on Innovation, though, if you're going to bring someone out. Um, yeah, if, if it's a betting game, money's on the line, it's yep. going to be Innovation. It's going to be Innovation. Why would you not bring him out? Uh, it, it also may depend a little bit on, on the map that's coming up next. Uh, but this map, Frost, uh, it is a map you talk about all those, like, little pass you can run around to the back doors and stuff and that's something that can actually be really annoying for for terrence to deal with all these little speeding baiting run buys as they go up yeah. to four bases um of course zerg always has to be worried about little attacks because medevacs don't really care about pass they just go wherever they want um but here we are on frost the score currently is four to three in favor of acer but the man who's taken all three of the points for empire and so far in the upper left hand location is the red terran happy and his opposing player in the upper right corner representing acer known for being incredibly good at zerg it's going to be none other than nurchio so it, it is not cross map which is important to note and in fact with these spawns if nurchio wants to take a, a third base um to the left of his main uh, that's going to be a base that Happy could definitely put on a lot of pressure over, of course, and once Happy's on three bases here, uh, just pushing across this top and this little bridge here uh, is a really good angle to push with, with Widow Mines and, uh, and Bio. It's it's all, it's all it's area where it's hard for Zerg to run in there without getting hit by massive Widow Mine splash because it's a very small and tight environment. So I think Nurture will still end up taking this base at some point, but it might be a base that it's like he takes it and he's like, well... If I have to, I can give that up and just really focus on mostly expanding down the map on the right side. Yeah, it's actually, I really love the way, again, we talk about these newer maps kind of changing up the, yeah. the dynamic of the game. This third base, no matter which one you take, one is very exposed and the other is weak to a cliff. I mean, there's so many times we see a protest player put a pylon on the top, warp into the mineral lines, or Terran players, you say, just like everything on them has range, so you just shoot from the top of the cliff. It's not a happy base to take for Nurtio. And, the map spawn locations will absolutely dictate where the third base goes for each of these players. But one thing I gotta say, I've seen this happen on Frost more than even Whirlwind. Ninja bases seem to be a very common thing on Frost. Oh yeah, and, and that could definitely come out from either player. Of course, uh, Terran, you know, they, they can benefit a lot from uh, just a, a command center hidden because one, they can lift it uh, if, if it's under danger. I mean, once Mutas are out, it can still die, but at least it has a, a little bit, some chance of surviving if it's spotted. But then the other big thing is that to benefit from the hidden base, they don't have to risk 
sending, you know, 20 SCVs down there, which would then die if, if you know, speedings find it. They can just use that to drop all their mules so the rest of their bases, you know, stay up for much longer. Uh, hey. there, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so even in a worst case scenario, you make a planetary fortress, pop down like five turrets. You don't, you're not even in that much danger to begin with, yeah. even if it gets discovered. But I was going to comment, actually, I know there's no Protoss at hand right now, but have you ever seen White Rush hidden tactics for uh, his his hidden bases? Does he do like the recall the probes? The recall the probes, yeah. yeah I, I love that touch because, of course, that's typically what gives things away the most. If you know, Zerg player accidentally rallies some drones or an SCV goes across with a transfer, like... That's what gives those bases away almost immediately. Not the actual scouting of the base, but seeing the SCVs in the middle of the map awkwardly moving around. Yeah, you're like, like maybe if there's one that's there to scout, if it's like 10, like, they're yeah, probably going like into the base. 14 minute, mount, as, uh, minute mark, like SCV scouting, you know, standard stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess it only makes sense for a pro to maybe build pylons or something, but definitely guess, not if it's more than one. Uh, <laughs> which, I mean, transferring one probe is not that useful. Uh, well, I'm actually, uh, the one thing I'm really just kind of on the edge of my seat waiting for is, like, trying to tell if Nurture's going to go for an all-in or not. The thing about Nurture's all-ins is they tend to be, like, like he's got this plus one passive bonus where, like, his all-ins just seem to be so much more effective and stronger than anyone else's when it comes to this matchup. But if he plays the macro game, I can, again, these are, like, two titans who have, they've got a history together. They've played against, mul against each other multiple times. They know each other's tactics. And in, do in like, I think Happy and Nurture probably know each other better than like their own teammates know them is the thing. And because of that, it's very easy to predict like, oh, if Nurture's going to hit me with an all-in, you know, if he's going to play predictable to Nurture's style, you know, or something in that regard, Happy will hold it better and vice versa for Nurture. So I think this is going to be a particularly weird match for both of these guys, just speaking from a mentality perspective. And I know a lot of the times you guys hear casters talking about the mentality and it's boring filler, but this is one where it's actually kind of important. It really is. Uh, I do think... Happy is kind of always looking to take the game to late stages. Uh, and especially against Nurchio, I think that's really where he's, he's going to want to take it because uh, I think he feels more comfortable in, in the super late game against Nurchio. But like you said, Nurchio has so many tricks up his sleeve. Uh, Happy mm -hmm. looks to be doing almost Blue the flame. same. Yeah, same thing he did against Scarlet. And, you know, Nurchio. Oh, but Nurchio's getting a Roach Warren. He's, he should be fine to deal with this. Uh, the biggest folly for Scarlet, of course, was scouting it so late. You know, the evolution chamber came down, like, not nearly in time to really ward off the concrete amount of damage that they blew flame guarantees. But the scary thing, of course, for Nurture is even with the roaches out, even if he shuts this down, the follow-up of mech versus roaches, not a situation he necessarily wants to be in. Yeah, it's one of those situations where, uh, you know, mass roaches does good against mech when it's in small numbers. If you get stuck on roaches and a Terran player like maxes out in mech, all of a sudden you're in really, really big trouble. So you have to figure out how can you easily transition out of roaches, maybe add in swarm hosts or, or mute list. Um, that being said, uh, you know, oh, you go ahead. Today's been like the day of old school strats, right? Yeah. I would love to see Nurtio pull out an overlord drop if he invests in roaches <laughs> to crush the mech of happy. It does still work. It's not nearly as effective because a lot of players are used to it nowadays, but like it still does work. Oh, especially if they go straight for, like, Thor Hellion, which is what uh, yeah. Happy showed against Scarlet. Yep. You know, yeah, they might have one or two missile turrets. That's not going to stop a whole bunch of Overlords. And w once you drop on a Thor, take that out, the Hellions aren't going to do too much on their own. So uh, it, it's a great counter strategy to, to Mech. Now, if there's a lot of Banshees out, that's kind of what, what can stop that. And some players going Mech make a lot of Banshees. Oh. But Happy hasn't been doing that so far. No, and he's coming out with those Hellions in full force. There's 14 on the field, and Nurture has not scouted a thing. No Overlord will see this until he's already within his quadrant of the map. Overseer's just now coming in, but perhaps a little too late. There are, again, Roaches will be great at holding this off initially, but there's just so many Hellions is the problem. He's actually... Okay, now he's going for the drones. I kind of wish Happy would have split his Hellions there. I think it would have been a little bit more effective than sending them all into that one base, but... Cleans up. 10 workers for a couple Hellions lost. Only 6 Hellions lost so far. Oh, 7 now, but... Has got to make this a little more worthwhile. The, the whole point of a blue flame attack is to catch your opponent off guard and kill as many workers as possible. And he's not really accomplished that just yet. Yeah, he got a decent number of kills and he kept most of his Hellions alive. Uh, like you said, ideally you get more damage done. And if he split up his Hellions, maybe he could have gotten more damage done. It's, it's a little bit riskier because you could end up just having both segments, you know, killed. Uh, and it and looks like Happy taking the less riskier strategy, but now all of a sudden he, he's faced with the fact that he hasn't done critical damage to his opponent. His oh. opponent's marching across the map with a ton of roaches now. 
Yeah, but the siege tank down. We've even got a barracks providing a little more surface area to prevent the roaches from getting right on top of this bunker. And with the siege tank and some repair, he'll be fine. And the, meanwhile, the Heli is still alive, are keeping the roaches from going full force across the map. They have to come home and defend. They have to stop this blue flame. Oh, and it looks like there's. Oh, a Hellbat drop gearing up at the exact same time. Axelab goes straight for the heart of the main. That's right. Happy uh, working. His defense is strong. His Hellions have gotten like, a good number of kills. Continuing to poke in here. And now this Hellbat drop. And there's no overlords across the top of the map. So this has gone unspotted. Uh, actually, wait. Nurtio must have spotted it because he actually did pull four roaches back to defend. They anticipate it coming. Uh, but even then, look at this. 30 damage a hit from these blue flame Hellbats. I mean, he only needs to get a volley or two off to really kill these drones. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, this is a situation where he's not getting amazing drone kills, but uh, like, like you said, I mean, Nurture is just Ooh. on roaches right now. He, he doesn't have too much other tech. So if, if Happy can keep Nurture in the back foot, he's going to be, you know, definitely in an advantageous position as the game goes on. But there Excellent. is that drop tech you were talking about. Yeah, I got the stupidest grin on my face right now when I saw that researching. This will be a lot of fun. We'll see if he's able to get that off the ground. Right now, Happy is the one still putting pressure on Inertio. Medivac's chased away from the main. Of course, there's another Hellbat drop that could strike at the third base. Or it looks like he's going to be queued up to actually go in the back of the natural, which is a pretty cool move because he hasn't struck at the natural quite yet. So that might be a, a least oh. anticipated aspect. And a really cool move there. We've got, again, kind of the... I don't know who started it first, but I saw Pult do it first. He's got the sort of Pult-esque Vikings on the field just trying to clean up Overlords, but with Transfuses, Nurture's actually been minimizing the losses of those Overlords. That's not something I've ever really seen anyone go out of their way to do. Transfuse an Overlord. Well, uh, Nurture cares for every single one of his Zerg minions, especially the ones that allow them to build more Zerg minions here. Uh, and it looks like he's marching across the map now. Uh, and Overlord cluster is following these roaches so yep. we all have that big draw play happy's in the middle of trying to move out and take his third base he does have a reasonable tank count but if the roaches get dropped on top of the tanks this is that neutralizes their range that and this makes it really dangerous because nurcio he's gonna find these tanks fairly spread out so it's gonna be hard to just kind of clump up and win oh we lost his entire natural actually while this is going on the blue flame hellions do get taken or do a lot of damage but okay the vikings see this coming he's actually going half and half he's getting burrow behind us we can burrow the roaches afterwards but is he going to get here in time? A lot of these oh. overlords are being taken out with roaches inside of them in full. And, and there's not a chance to drop. Oh, you know, now he's activating drop. But all the roaches from the front are pretty much taken out. Hellbats it should be able to clean this up. He should, Happy should be able to hold this. Man, and he didn't just hold it. He just destroyed Crushed. it. Oh. I guess, I guess that's that. That is that, but that will also take us to the ace match. Axelab, we're going to get our wish game nine coming oh, this, up here. This is so up. amazing. Um, you know, I, I, I have I have to admit, I've had doubts. When when it was when Acer was up four to one and Innovation was on bat, I was like, well, maybe he'll just close it out. I mean, he's such a great player, but happy. Wow. And the way he defended that, he had, he had actually, he kind of predicted that might happen because he saw no tech. With all, every time he was dropping and harassing, that was also serving as a scout at the same time. Yeah. So he saw nothing but roaches, no tech. The only way mass roaches could ever work at this this later on, later on in the game is if he uses the drop. So he had like three missile turrets in that position, plus like five Vikings, plus he had like a billion hellbats. It was just there was no way that was going to work for Nurgia. Man, <laughs> I just I you know I really I, I messaged you about this too. Like I said, like I think he could take like you know Bly or Nurgia or whatever, but MMA was the biggest threat to him. And n now that that's off the table, yeah. I think this is entirely within the realm of possibility for Empire to win this. I mean, it's it's down to that that critical final match. Uh, I don't know exactly what the last map is. Let me look that up really quickly. Okay, the last map is actually going to be Pol or no, it says Polar Knight. Polar Knight's not there. It's um, it is going to be Polar Knight. Or no, Derelict Watcher, I think. It yeah, so we like, already played on Polar Knight. Yeah, so. the map order is. Wait, do we play on Derelict Watcher yet or not? Uh, yes, I believe so, because I remember gushing about how cool the map was with you. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I, I'm looking at actually map order for a, a different one. Um, but we'll, yeah, they, we'll... they, they rotate the maps every week. It's yeah. never the same map order two weeks in a row. So we've seen, we haven't seen Whirlwind yet, though. Haven't we? I feel like uh, we you know what? Let, I'm going to we'll go look this because now this is going to bug me. I got to find All out right. real quick. Well, we'll find out. Of course, there's one deciding match. It's tied up four to four, game nine between Acer World and Empire. Come up next.